Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop. So today I have this box right here and inside this box is the Atom Stack A5 M50 CNC laser. So this laser is supposed to be able to engrave, it's supposed to cut, be able to cut some materials, things like that. What I'm going to do is unbox it, put it together and put it through its paces. If you're interested, stick around. Okay, figure I'll run through the contents of the package here. So here is the x-axis with the gantry and the drive wheels and the drive motor. Well, both drive motors for X and Y. It comes with this cutting mat, which is a piece of spring steel. Um, I guess to protect whatever surface you're setting the laser onto. I'm not sure if this is standard with the pack or if it is just part of this review. I'll try to find out an update as necessary. Here is your laser module right here. It claims to be a 40 watt uh, laser. I'm assuming that would be equivalent wattage because I doubt there is any way that this is actually generating 40 watts. As a matter of fact, on this um, on the module itself, its maximum rated wattage is 5 watts. Most of these companies can claim a higher wattage because they call those equivalent watts and they achieve that higher wattage through the use of mirrors and focusing lenses to um, basically concentrate the energy coming from the laser module and turn it into much higher power by the time it hits the material that you're cutting. Inside here is all the hardware and a couple of uh, sample pieces of material that you can test on. We have a USB cable right here, power supply right here. Here is our linear rails and this is going to be the control box right here. It does come with a pretty substantial user manual. It looks like it's going to be pretty thorough and so what I'm going to do now is take a look at this manual and start putting this guy together. Well, all in all, it wasn't too terrible. The instructions obviously could be translated a little bit better, but it only took me about 30 minutes to put this together. And that's uh, after making a couple of mistakes, just from not taking a good look at the instructions. So, not too shabby. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up in the garage workshop, because obviously I don't want to use this inside the house. And um, we uh, will go ahead and put it through some tests. Well, I've been able to play around with this a little bit and dial in some of the settings. A great thing that Atom Stack does for you is they have a pre-compiled uh, list of recommended settings for different types of material for both engraving and cutting and um, you can access that with a QR code that's found in the manual um, it's pretty handy they, it may not be exact like the exact settings for what you're working with but it gets you really close and then you can dial it in for example on this piece of wood here um, this is just some plywood I don't know I think it's poplar on the outside this was the recommended setting as far as speed and power and I kept the speed the same and I turned up the power and then I turned up the power even more and then I was in the process of I think this was my final um, the, this was dialed in the best but then my computer decided to go to sleep on me and it interrupted the uh, process so I'm gonna have to do it again so 
here's the computer that I'm using. It's just an old Surface Pro 3, Surface 3 Pro, whatever you call it. And here's a Laser GRBL. That's the software that I'm using. I already loaded the file. It's a JPEG file. And it has some anti-aliasing and some grayscale. So it's a pretty complex file. It's not just black and white. And um, so once you bring the file in, then you can adjust your quality here by the number of lines per millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and bump mine up to 10 because I still see some spaces in between um, each of the passes of the laser. And then when you hit next here, you can um, also, there's some more uh, settings that you can change. And this is where you set the speed of the laser and um, for engraving on wood, 3,000 millimeters per minute is the recommended speed. I'm using M4, which is dynamic power, which basically means it um, the power of the laser is dependent on the speed of the movement of the laser. So as the laser is slowing down, as it's coming to the end of one pass and getting ready to start on the, the beginning of the next pass, if you are at full power the whole time, then it'll it'll make the the, the edge of each one of those passes darker than the rest of the image. So what dynamic power does is it tapers off the power as it, the head slows down and then brings the power back up as the head gets back up to full speed and that in theory should keep the contrast and the brightness of the image the same across the whole image and not like having these dark hard burnt in edges. To give you an example it, it's more obvious on one of these, um, maybe, where you can see possibly how the, uh, this is the end of a pass and here's the other end of the pass. You can see how the edges are a little bit darker than the rest of the image. And that was when I engraved with constant power. Some more of the, um, options here. This is your, um, you, you can set your min and your max laser power, a, a thousand being max, and but in the recommended settings page it never goes over 800, so there might be a reason for that, I'm not sure, so at the moment, unless I'm cutting, I'm going to keep it at 800, but even for cutting parameters, all the cutting parameters keep the maximum at 800. So there may be some issues with overheating. I might play around with uh, over 800, like 900 or 1000. But for the time being, I'm just going to keep it at 800 or less, depending on what the material is I'm engraving. Um, you can play around with some of the image settings. Um, you can change the size of the image right here if you want. This is the right size for me. It's about just a little under two inches high and about four inches long. And once you have all these settings dialed in, you click the create button and then it'll load it into laser GRBL, give you a preview of how it's going to print. And you have to uh, connect to your printer like so, just clicking on the connect button. There's, an also, there's also a connect button down here. And then as you have your piece of wood or whatever your engraving set up, if you want to make sure it's lined up properly or that the travel of the laser is going to stay on the wood, what you can do is you can hit this frame button here. And what it does is it outlines the, uh, the perimeter of the image that you are going to uh, engrave. And as you can see, I'm not lined up right now. So I'm going to go ahead and home it on all axes, which is this home icon right here. Once it's homed, I'm going to line up my piece in the general area where I think it should be. I actually sight down the edge of the, uh, the frame here to help get it parallel to that edge like that.
it's, once it's parallel, I'll call it good. I'll frame it one more time. You can see it actually shows you where the laser is going to travel. And that's good. Since my wood is a little bowed, I'm going to place a weight on it to help hold it down. When you're ready to go, you just hit the little play button and it starts doing its thing. Down here it tells you how long it projects that it'll take, so it's around 10 minutes here. And then up on this bar it tells you how long it is actually taking. You can stop the engraving here, you can stop the engraving down here, and with this unit you can stop the engraving by hitting the emergency stop button. It's getting a little smoky in here, I will have to open the door, but well, so far it's looking pretty good. That turned out pretty good. Maybe just a light sanding to get away some of the smoke uh, staining here. I and mean, that's really good, especially compared to the last laser I tested out on this channel. The quality is outstanding. Let's try cutting some wood now. You use this piece of provided uh, acrylic to adjust the focus length of your laser. At least I think this is the piece. They, they don't really specify. They, they provide a lot of plastic, but these are really small, so I don't think those are it. I think it's this guy. So what you do is you loosen the knob that, that holds the laser in position, and then, and then you rest the laser on top of the piece of wood or whatever material you're cutting or engraving plus the spacer and then you tighten you tighten the knob and then you, you pull the spacer out and now the laser is ready to do whatever you know you want to do on that material okay I think I have a laser set up now to cut out this pattern on one of those little test pieces of wood I have this. I have the speed um, cut back a lot. It's only 150 millimeters per minute, and so even though there's a very small number of lines that are going to be cut, it's still going to take about 10 minutes. I got my piece all lined up. You can barely see it in there because it's so small. Here it is from the back. I assume this is going to get very smoky. We're going to go ahead and start this. See what happens. All right, let's get this out of the way and see how this turned out. Hmm. Wow. It even did like a double outline, and look how thin the detail. I mean, look at that. That was just an artifact from the drawing. I mean, that's impossibly thin. And uh, here is the actual cutout. Pretty amazing. Looks like, I don't know, juice from the wood or something. 
we got on to this, uh, I guess it's just resin, like the natural resins, or maybe it's the glue, because it is plywood. Either way, hopefully I, I should be able to clean that off with like some mineral spirits, some turpentine or something. But, uh, oh, that's so very precise. Oh, my. I'm assuming I'll be able, I mean, these little parts can, will come out if I just poke them out with this kind of stuff in there. I just use the tip of my mechanical pencil and come up and come out, so. Very impressive. Very impressive. I know it's only three millimeter. This is what the back side looks like. Again, like, I don't know, it, it kind of curled a little bit as it was getting cut. Didn't affect the quality of the cut, though. I'm going to try um, cutting out another, I'll use another one. Actually, you know what, I'll, I'm going to do this. This is a good, I don't know what this is, 3 16 maybe. I'm going to try cutting something out on this. This is plywood, this is NDF core plywood. Uh, there are no settings um, suggested for this in there, so I'm going to have to play around with it, but we'll see what I can do. Okay, I finally got it clean. I tried mineral spirits, turpentine, two different types of alcohol, and it ended up being acetone, which makes sense because I use acetone to clean off my saw blades. And it's, it's just the sap and stuff from the wood. So now, back to this guy. Alright, I got the new one set up. We're going to check it out. See if I can cut out this uh, material of unknown thickness. I really need to get my calipers out so I can check some of this stuff. But I've got the speed all the way down to 60, power up to 800, so let me see how it goes. You can see where it actually uh, caught on fire. I, I think that's probably where air, air assist would come in handy, is keep it from igniting, but I don't have air assist. So you can see it did not make it all the way through to the back side. So, some experimentation, obviously, is going to be warranted here, uh, as far as um, cutting through this M MDF core plywood. And maybe the you know the properties of MDF probably make it more difficult to burn through than actual plywood that uses real wood throughout. But I'm gonna try to engrave one of these little black uh, acrylic tabs here and see if I can get lucky with that. Alright, acrylic is pretty much the same settings as the last time. Uh, you can't see it under there because it's so tiny, but we're going to give it a shot. I've, I've just got the weight on there because the steel plate that it's sitting on wants to bow, so it's holding everything flat. So let's see uh, how it goes here. The acrylic is black. I, I don't think you can cut clear acrylic like this guy, unless it's got a black film on it maybe. I'm not positive. But, ooh, that stinks. I'll be back when it's done here. i got to open the door. Alright, there it is. Uh, it finished cutting and it looks like it might have done it. A little, uh, I didn't take the film off the back. I don't know if that's a problem or not. Let's find out. There we go. I'm going to call that a win. It's not perfect, but for the size, it was very detailed. You know, like way too tiny detail for the size that I was trying to cut, I think. But I think it still did a great job. Um, 
I don't know. Uh, what do you think? I think it did great. Now, if you could imagine something larger, you know, and just cutting out, you, um, you could do some really in intricate, intricate designs uh, with this laser. Considering that this is literally uh, 25 millimeters high, which is about an inch high. So, lots of uh, lots of great detail there. Okay, last thing I'm going to try is um, I've got this knife blank. It's just a piece of steel. Um, I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, it's a 1095 knife steel. I, it's probably too shiny to to uh, engrave as it is, but I, if I paint it black, I'm pretty sure it should take an etching pretty well, so I'm going to try that. Okay, I've got my steel painted, painted flat black, and it's all lined up on the laser. I'm going to go ahead and start it, and then we'll come back when it's done. Alright, it's finally done. It took about three and a half hours. Let's see how it looks here. This is with the paint on. And this is how it looks after the paint has been removed. Uh, not as much detail. The, the tiny details have been lost. However, I still think it turned out really good. It's definitely not a deep etch. You can't even feel it. But, I think it is uh, deep enough that it would make a difference, um, especially to put a maker's mark on a knife or uh, some type of uh, design or something on something that you make out of steel. So it can be done on high carbon steel. The uh, booklet only mentioned uh, galvanized and stainless, which that, that's what this is. But um, looks like high carbon steel also works. Well, I spent the better part of a day just testing this out, playing around with different types of materials, seeing what it could do. And I have to admit that I'm pretty impressed with the capabilities of this laser. Um, I've had a lot of fun just figuring out what it can do. It outperformed um, my expectations as far as um, some of the things that it could do, especially with cutting. Um, there's still a whole lot more I haven't even tried yet. I haven't done any type of uh, engraving on leather or, or cutting out material or even cutting paper to make like stencils and things like that. Um, but it appears that this thing is super capable and uh, you could do a lot with it. And for the price, I feel like you're getting a lot of laser and a lot of capability. The fact that this laser works with open source software like Laser GRBL and with paid software like Lightburn, um, it gives you some options. Ultimately, it's just another CNC that runs off of G-Code, but uh, those two pieces of software are equally useful to do pretty much whatever you want to do with this laser. If I had to have one gripe or come up with one complaint, uh, really, there's not much I can complain about with this. Um, putting it together was really easy. The instructions were okay, but if you've put things together like this before, it should be pretty simple. Um, I like the um, the guide, the little the suggested parameters list that they provide for you to use to get you in the ballpark for when you're starting on something new. Um, maybe the only thing that's kind of cumbersome or not not as great to deal with is the the, the focusing system on the laser where you have to use the spacer um, which is fine for most materials if you have a large item the spacer is fine if you're trying to engrave or cut something very small um, that would be smaller than the spacer you know it, it might get a little tippy and a little bit hard but that's really um, splitting hairs at this point considering what this laser can do and what you're getting for the amount of money that you're spending.
I hope you enjoyed my review of the Atom Stack A5 M50 laser. It is a very good all-around laser. You get a good cutting surface. Um, it cuts and engraves a wide variety of materials, and it cuts up to pretty decent thicknesses. I would say uh, solid wood or plywood, you could probably get about six millimeters out of this laser, um, which is pretty good. And it also cuts things like acrylic and other plastics and paper, obviously, and cardboard. So if uh, you are in the market for a very well-rounded laser, I would suggest you take a look at the Atom Stack A5 M50. If you'd like to learn more about it, I will leave a link down in the description below uh, where you can learn more about this laser and uh, you can also purchase it through this link. I'd like to extend a big thanks to Adam Stack for sending me this laser to test out. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe because I do um, release reviews from time to time as well as project videos from my workshop. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.